What do you do in terms of dealing with the influence of Western standards of beauty on Asian women in terms of the pageant and the pageant You know, judging. that's a really good question, Christine. I'll tell you why. Because just now, a, uh, in one of the websites about beauty pageants, said that, you know, um, a lot of people, uh, you know, they say that Miss Universe is looking at girls that have the, especially South American, you know, kind of look. Mm -hmm. In a way, it is true. There's something the matter with it. This year, the final five were, I think, Ecuador, Venezuela, Spain, Philippines, and you know, a lot of people speak Spanish in Philippines, and I don't, I don't remember one other. All five countries spoke Spanish. Mm -hmm. Something is the matter. Out of 90 countries, don't you think there's a little bit something is wrong there? But yet, it was voted that way. You right. know, this is, I think Miss Universe is one of the most, or most uh, fair. And, uh, the, the, the final is really judged by the, by the, by the judges. Mm -hmm. But the judges themselves can be very prejudiced too. Mm -hmm. So you never really know. I have never been in a business where I was so sort of out of control. Mm -hmm. Miss Universe is actually is out of control. You can, think, you can think that you have a very good girl, but other people can folding me, you know, can actually say no uh, to it. And you don't really know how she, how she be, how she actually comes across mm -hmm. on stage that day, and everything relies on her on stage that day. What do you say to people who would argue, why invest so much in a beauty pageant? All that does is kind of promote the physical over the intellectual, in, in as far as, as women are concerned. What, what do you say to people who argue argue that? Actually, there is a lot of intellectual things going on in, in, in the Miss Universe. If you look at the girls who won, they are actually, their answers, their questions, the answers, some of those questions are so difficult and the girls are really quite smart. Mm -hmm. You cannot really be a stupid girl and be Miss Universe to be serious. Our three Miss Chinas that I have been involved with all of them are really very smart girls, not stupid girls. We view Miss Universe as being an ambassador not only for China to the rest of the world, but for the world to China. When she returns, uh, hopefully once we get a winner, when she returns to China, she'll have the experience of having traveled to 30 nations, having met heads of state, having really advocated for many of the most important social issues of our time. And she'll be a window into that experience for the billion people who will be looking to her as a role model. And to have you Sai stand behind that and bring that experience really isn't just for one woman who's lucky enough to win, but also for everyone who's looking up to her as a, a role model and inspiration. So I think that really does sum up you Sai's work. Well, let's talk a little bit more about your entrepreneurship, um, your makeup line. This year is 22nd year of this brand in China. And uh, there are very few brands 20 years old. 22 years old in China. The reason why I think it's lasted is that the entire premise of it being there is that it was made for us, mm -hmm. for Asian women, and for our own coloring, for our own um, special needs. And surely from the first product I made, I had Chinese herbs in it. Really? And since L'Oreal brought bought it, and we, we even did more. Uh, we did uh, Lingzi, you know, we, we, we had refined some Lingzi and, and got the essence, you know, it really is wonderful for, for mm -hmm. the skin. And we did a couple of other, you know, uh, Yun Er, you know, uh, you know, we did some very, very interesting uh, products with very interesting Chinese herbs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, since I am a brand, I can say to you is that lasting so long sh surely proves one thing, hmm. that if, you, if, if your products are not good, they wouldn't last. For someone that's managed to have so much success in all these different ventures, it, I guess my question to you would be, do you believe in luck or is that not something, do you believe you've been lucky or do you, don't, do you not think luck factors into it at all? If you were with me while I was filming the, the One World Series for China, 
And if you were me, with me, going through the start of my cosmetic business, you would not say it's luck. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is purely tears and hard work and sweat. I'm telling you that I have interviewed thousands of people. I've never seen a very successful person who is very successful merely because he's lucky. Do you think a lot of success has to do with not having a fear of failure? Because your story sounds like you never really were afraid that you couldn't pull it I off. Think, I think you're right. I think in order to be, to be honest with you, in order to be an entrepreneur, you cannot be fearful. You know, there are people who are afraid of even walking across the street. These are not entrepreneurs. <laughs> entrepreneurs always like to get to the edge. You know, I mean, you put everything into this and you're hanging on the edge of, of a window. You know, you, you could fall. Mm. But entrepreneurs are like people who are passionate. You know, I have met actors who says, if I cannot act, I will rather die. So an entrepreneur probably has the same psyche. She'll probably say, if I cannot run my own business, I rather, I mean, I certainly don't like to work for somebody else. <laughs> right. I mean, this is what I really want to do, and I will put all my eggs into this basket. What sort of toll does, ha, has this approach taken on your personal life, and do you have any regrets? Would you ever trade one for the other? <laughs> at this age, at my age, I would say to you that I can surely say that I don't really have many regrets. I really think that um, I have been lucky enough to do everything that I want to do. Uh, and, and I don't do it with a selfish intention. Mm -hmm. If I made a lot of money, it's because I probably deserve it. I do it the hard way. I use hard work. I use my ingenuity. I, nobody gave it to me. Mm -hmm. So I deserve it. And the most successful part of my life, I would have to say, is that I have been honest about everything that I do. I never made one dollar out of the misery of someone else. I always kind of crack up a bit when I hear people describe you, Sai. You've heard the label, the Chinese Oprah, or the Martha Stewart of the Far East. And other you know, folks will call her the most famous woman in China. And all of that is true. But when you think about these great icons in America, they're defined by one thing that they did. They were great talk show hosts, or they invented uh, some incredible product to make people beautiful or self-confident. In the case of you, Sai, it's just such a combination of all of these accomplishments and achievements that I personally don't think that you could give her a single label. And what's really incredible about her is the fact that she's really evolved over time. She's someone who really understands every generation that she's lived in and has really shown an incredible capacity to bridge the gap between you know, East and West and really understand the generation she's in. My mother said that you are very successful in your 20s. It doesn't mean anything. The success of your life depends on how you live your last portion of your life. At that time of your life, are you happy? Are you surrounded by loved ones or the people, people you love? How is your health? Or are you financially very comfortable? That's the ultimate, you know. Yeah. I think I'm probably living the last part of my life and I must tell you, I'm happy.